I want to tell you some funny uh, stories here. I, I've spoken about this medical cone that I made for my wife, and it actually has zinc and, and iron and chromium in here, and I also have this grounded to an outlet, uh, to the mouth of an outlet, and that would be grounded right into there. I put a the, the uh, smooth end of a drill bit in there, and then an electrical uh, connector that goes to this pan, and that grounds it out, and that increases the uh, output by about four times its output. And so this is very, very powerful, but the odd thing is to come to uh, the realization that this is like having another person in the house. Um, I told my wife it's like having a ghost in the house because of this field that's coming off of it and how it tracks her. And so if I'm doing ion testing or pendulum testing, I have to know where this field is because it's sending out a stream of anions, iron, uh, zinc, and chromium, and whatever material the cement is made out of. That is in the ribbon that is tracking her. Well, it was interesting because one day I wanted to to uh, see if I could get this to increase uh, the accuracy. Um, she was out taking a sauna, and I sent this out with her. I said, you know, just take this and wipe yourself down with it instead of a towel when you're sweating. Wipe yourself down with this because she sweats out zinc. She's got, or excuse me, she sweats out copper. She's got high copper levels. And so I wanted this with her skin on it, and I wanted it also with the concentration of copper. So she got done with her sauna, came in and handed me this soggy uh, na napkin. And mind you that this thing is in the bedroom, which is two rooms over that way. And this is set to, to track her DNA, which is on this napkin here. She wiped her skin on it, so that tracks her. So anyhow, I come out here. And I take this in one hand, and with a pendulum, I'm, I'm wanting to check to see what, what is actually in her sweat. Because she always sweats out copper. Well, I checked copper, and it said positive to copper, and it said no to zinc. Which means that she was sweating out zinc. And the odd thing is, you know, I've been able to track her for 20 years, especially with this balance here. Um, knowing what she's at, but this really baffled me. She's never sweat zinc before, and it got me really confused until <laughs> until it dawned on me one day what had happened was here I had <laughs> look at this this is this is the target match white cotton handkerchief with her DNA on it white cotton handkerchief with her DNA on it. Because this was a closer target match to what this had here, this had quit following my wife and was following this because of the white cotton handkerchief with her DNA on it. And so as I'm standing here holding this, little did I realize that this thing was spraying this napkin, this handkerchief, with zinc, iron, chromium, and anions. So what I was picking up on this <laughs> was not the mineral balance that was in the handkerchief, <laughs> but the zinc that was being sprayed from this bugger from two doors down. <laughs> so the funny thing is you, you start putting things like medical cones in the house and you literally have to think of it like a pet, like, <laughs> like another person in the house because the fields <laughs> Because this thing's going to be sending out this distributor field, this tracking field, and it's going to be sending these things to, to the target match. But that was funny because that had me absolutely, totally confused for almost a month. I could not figure that out. And I'm glad I just, uh, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't try balancing her out with more, anything with more copper in it. We just threw it, uh, tosses downstairs to the laundry and just said, I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. And finally, it makes sense. This bugger was hitting this. And I was getting the reading off of this, not the reading off my wife or any of the minerals that she had sweat out while she was in the sauna. So here's the thing. If you have something like this in the house, you've got to consider the fact that it's there and it's like another person. So uh, fascinating stuff. Thanks for watching. 
I wanted to tell you <clears throat> another funny story here. We're looking out here at the birds, the squirrels. But I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to zoom in here as best I can. Right out there by the street, about 100 feet away from the house. You can see the meter there. Right out by the street, just beyond those trees, you can see a pole sticking up. And that's our meter. I went and set a uh, cone underneath that meter to uh, send the, the, um, the fields into the electrical system. And to my surprise, the distributor field followed the electrical current throughout the entire house. And our house was completely filled with the distributor field. It was running in all the wires. The only place where it did not go, it would not go beyond, it would not go beyond a uh, light switch. Unless you turn the light switch on, then it would go out to the bulbs. Which means that the electricity was traveling not in the neutral wires, not in the ground wires, but it was traveling in the hot wires of the uh, throughout the house. But the distributor field was everywhere throughout the electrical current. I was very, very surprised that every cord we had plugged in um, had electrical current in it, or had the uh, the uh, distributor field in it. So my question is, um, if this is able to, if the collector field is actually able to uh, draw in uh, chi or um, orgone or other healing energies or if the distributor field itself has healing properties to it and simply by um, uh, shooting it into a meter or into an electrical uh, cord of the house that you can get this into the walls of a house you know does this have healing properties can you actually surround your entire house then with healing energies by putting this into the electrical system and but um, I actually had to move the cone because of the amount of electrical fields and and the um, all the other testing that I was doing in the house I found that the or at least I suspected that the distributor field running throughout the entire electrical system was messing up my ability to track other fields and uh, coming from other directions so but I'm planning on come spring uh, putting a cone back out there and to get that into the the wiring again but if this is able to transmit uh, orgon or chi and we're able to actually put it into the wiring of a house I mean that has great possibilities right there thank you for watching I have to tell you a funny story here I was testing my cat to see about where the uh, see if he has a distributor field and a collector field and off of his nose comes a distributor field and about well quit sniffing my hand here and about where his eyes are is where the collector field goes out and I uh, was checking him to see where the distributor field was going thinking that it was probably going to be going outside to where all the birds are but no, it was actually heading toward the refrigerator. And when I went to the refrigerator, I thought, oh, it must be heading toward the, uh, the tuna fish that's in the refrigerator. Right here, tuna fish. And I checked, it wasn't going to the tuna fish. It was going lower than the tuna fish. I thought, what in the world? It was going down here. And I tracked his, his distributor field was hitting this. Of all things, sunflower seeds raw sunflower seeds I thought what in the world so I set some on the floor for him and he had no interest in him but then I checked and he was high in copper and these were high in zinc and so apparently it was because his body was wanting to balance out the minerals that it was targeting this I thought that's crazy I mean, because he doesn't want it, but his body wants it. He want his body wants zinc to balance out the copper. Because my wife had been feeding him some uh, supplements and stuff that had uh, she didn't realize they were high in copper. So he was tracking this, and then the other day I got up, and this little bugger 
If we don't feed him right away in the morning, we give him his morning tuna fish. If we don't feed him right away in the morning, then he will go and scarf on his food. And then he will, once he's filled up with his food, then we end up giving him his tuna fish and he throws up on the floor. So our routine in the morning is to find this guy and give him his tuna fish right away before he fills up on his other food. That way he doesn't throw up. But one morning I got up and came out here and I could not find him. I called for him and he didn't come. So I thought, well, I've got to get some tuna fish down him because we don't want barf on the floor. I thought, well, where in the world is he? He's not responding to me. So I thought, well, hmm. I thought, well, let's see if he's still tracking this. So I got out the pendulum and tested around this thing. And sure enough, I picked up a uh, distributor field going to this. And so by holding this with one hand, and here, let me just go over here and we'll pull out one of these. Holding this with one hand and then following around, I was able to determine the direction that the field was coming from and it was coming from downstairs. And so, actually it was more over in that direction that it was coming from, from downstairs. So I went downstairs and there he was sitting in the window, in the windowsill downstairs looking at a rabbit that was about three feet out, out the window and some squirrels that were out there, they were eating the, the bird feed that was falling from the feeder. But I thought that was interesting. By reverse tracking, I was able to track him. But it also made me curious, and I don't know if it's because he is a, a, a purebred and quite far from the original uh, predatory animal that, <laughs> that he was designed to be. But here he is. He's in the window downstairs with a rabbit three feet away from him, and he's tracking the sunflower seeds that are in the refrigerator. I thought, are you that dumb? There is a rabbit three feet away from you outside the window and squirrels and you're tracking sunflower seeds. But it brought up an interesting thing about the possibility of reverse tracking, of actually going to the target and following it back to the source. This really makes some for some interesting possibilities. Let's say that you're out with a group of, of guys that are hunting and uh, one guy's got a dough permit, so so you take down a dough, and then you can check around the dough to see if there's a field tracking it. And if the field is going to the sexual organs of the dough, it's a good possibility that you've got a buck that's tracking the dough. And you can then, as you butcher the dough, you can remove the uh, the sexual organs, the glands that the uh, the buck is tracking and then use that to find out where the buck is. You can triangulate the position of the buck. That, and um, now we're also looking into the possibility of setting a cone and using the sexual gland of the, of the doe to send a, uh, a, a field or to send those, those, that smell to the buck there might be the possibility that you could actually give him a strong whiff of that sexual gland and have him come trotting right in on you. Um, so there's a possibility of using this for hunting, not just to triangulate the position of what you're after, but also to use this for drawing in predatory animals or, an, or a buck that may be, uh, may be in rut. This was also fascinating because, let me show outside the window here bright sunshiny day I don't know if you can see it out there you see that bird feeder let's zoom in let's see if we can zoom in right there that bird feeder I just went out to feed it and or to fill it because it was almost empty and as a science project I mean just to ask the question I was curious about the reverse tracking so I brought the uh, the uh, feeder down to the ground I set it on the ground and I checked it around it for fields, and it had, <laughs> I cannot count <laughs> the number of tracking fields that were that were hitting that bird feeder from the birds. It was just hot. I mean, I even got six feet away from it, and it was just, the air was just full of tracking fields that were hitting that bird feeder. And I thought, well, maybe it's the seeds that are on the ground down here. 
let me go to the window here without tripping over everything. Oh, well, maybe it's those seeds that are on the ground. And so I, I set the bird feeder over to the side and I checked the seeds that were on the ground. It wasn't the seeds. It was the bird feeder itself. And I thought, well, maybe it's, you know, I, I, went, I went and double checked the area, double checked um, the other things that were around. And it was the bird feeder. And they, <laughs> I had a host of birds tracking that feeder. Now this feeder here was empty and I checked it to see if there was any birds tracking it and there was nothing on it. There were no tracking uh, occurring on that bird feeder because it was empty. But then I had a couple of bags of seed that I had set on the ground down there, down in that little snow trail. And I checked those and there were birds that were tracking that one already. But so it's interesting that the birds are able to lock onto um, the... Uh, the seeds from a distance and are able to follow follow them in also in my garage I had a, a bag of safflower seeds and I was just curious to see if anybody had locked in on that yet and then I had one strong hit um, on the safflower seeds but it wasn't coming from the air it was coming coming from down the street <laughs> over there and uh, something was locked onto it and and I actually, the signal was so strong, I actually went about 30 feet and was still able to detect it. But I could have taken that bag of safflower seeds and headed on up the street and um, tracked down whatever critter was locked onto it. But it's interesting, the possibility then of reverse tracking, where you actually start from the, the uh, target and work your way back to whoever's locked in on it. But that raises a lot of good possibilities and a lot more fields of research. So, thanks for listening. Well, here's an interesting adventure. Uh, this is about two weeks after I posted my first video about the birds and the tracking. I had time today to see about who was tracking the safflower seeds. And the uh, safflower critter was coming from that direction. Whoever was tracking it, it was coming low. And coming to the safflower, and I went and checked to see if he's still tracking it. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Checked over here. I got one. A real lightweight hit. It was coming from up, so there's a bird that's hooked onto it here. There he is. And let's see. There it is. So you can kind of get the angle of where he's coming from. It's a, a real uh, faint one, so it's a bird. And then I checked over here and had a solid hit. This is not a bird. This is something else. And the odd thing was it was heading toward my house. I thought, is it my cat? Is my cat locked onto this? So I went inside and t checked the cat. It was not him. So my hunch is that it's going through the house. It's coming from the other side of the house, from the woods. I'm going to go tracking it down here, but I wanted to try an experiment. I might as well video it while I'm doing it. Um, I had shared about how I can control a, uh, a field with my mind by giving it orders. And so here we have safflower seeds and another bag of safflower seeds. And what I'm going to do here is give this field a cognitive command and see if I can get it to shift and see if I have ability with my mind to affect the field of somebody else. So let's give this a try. Field, hit this. Hit this. It moved. <laughs> okay. That's good because I'm going to use a smaller bag for tracking the critter. Let's see if we can get it to go back. Field, hit this one. There we go. There we go. Huh. So I have the ability to affect somebody else's field. At least within certain parameters. Okay, field, hit this one. Okay. Okay, well, let me go heading through the woods and see what I can track down. It might be really boring. I mean, if we have a, a gopher in his tunnel, I'm all I'm going to be finding is snow. 
and that's going to be a really stupid video. Me standing out in the woods saying, look at the snow. There's a gopher under there. Like, yeah, right. Well, I'll head out, see what I can find. Talk in a bit. Well, my tracking didn't work. Headed off through the woods. No sooner did I start moving away from the house that all the squirrels and all the birds started locking onto my bag of safflower seeds. So I was getting hits from every direction. So I couldn't track down just the one. Squirrels and birds everywhere. So, scratch that. A ah, quick little interesting comparison here. This is one of the stumps, the boobs. This is a big cone made inside of a funnel. And then when I took it out of the funnel before it was completely dried up, I scraped it on the ground and got this nice point to it. I took these two upstairs and compared the ion output of each of these upstairs so it wasn't on the ground. And this was generating just as much as this was. And the reason for that is that this shape catches the EMF and cations come out the base of it as the anions are trying to be in be sucked in by the collector field the cations are going out and they create a traffic jam which reduces the uh, output of this unit but if you place these on a grounded piece of metal upstairs I tried that and immediately it was a cookie sheet um, this one started producing more than this and then I thought well okay well, let's take this downstairs and the reason that this would start producing more is the grounded sheet would absorb the cations immediately as they're coming out and then I wanted to see the difference once we ground it take it downstairs to the cement down here and see what the output difference is and let's see if I can do this without well, let's just see here okay there there you can see how much is coming out with that one and let's go over to this one and she's going nuts by the output I mean I even feel it flipping in my fingers there it's hard to keep it from keep it to let it do its thing but this is producing a whole lot more than this is downstairs when it's got a ground that can absorb the cations that are reading out the base of it so that's the rule of thumb as far as production if you don't have a, a grounded plate under it or you don't have earth or a cement floor to place it on this one will produce just as much as this but if you get a metal plate under it or if you get a uh, put this down in the basement this is going to produce a whole lot more than this will so thanks for watching one day I wanted to do some more testing on the tracking and we still got winter outside I didn't want to be out there looking for stuff so I took this and I told my wife to hide this somewhere in the house this is spry mints so I went out to the garage and she hid this in the house and then I came in to go looking for it so what I did is I took a, a cone and I took one of the spry mints and I taped it to it right there that's where you would get your target match and I also gave it mental cues and let me take you on this adventure here and I'm going to see if I can hold this and yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna do all this well I tell you what I won't swing the pendulum I'll just have to to uh, show you what I did but anyhow I uh, the first I swung the pendulum and it was giving me a signal from over here and so I tracked it and it was a solid signal coming right out of the closet here and you understand how this is I can put this down here but this is what I was following swinging the pendulum in front of that and had a solid hit in here and I went into here and it was hitting right to here I thought what in the world pulled this stuff out this toothpaste that my wife got has xylitol and mint in it which is the same thing that is in the spry mints xylitol and mint well she had what one two three four five of these and I could not get the uh, the tracking fields to ignore that and so what I had to do is I had to take these and put them in a box and put them right at the base of the cone so that it was in the collector field so that it would ignore them and then I got another hit 
somewhere in the bathroom area here and it was down by this Epsom salt down there so I figured that's a false hit and so I went looking for another one I got another one down here a solid hit went under here and it was going to this and spry mouthwash with xylitol <laughs> so it was catching the mint and xylitol in the house and then I thought well that's not what I'm after so I got another hit out here and followed it I thought it was in the fridge but it went through the fridge and was going up into the cupboard here so then I went and checked to see what was in the cupboard and oh she's moved them now they were here but this is what they are it was a bag of these chocolates come to find out this is chocolate that is sweetened with xylitol it's like oh man where is the uh it's catching all the xylitol in the house so I knew it was more than just my subconscious because I didn't know what was in this chocolate that's her stuff and uh, as a matter of fact let's see that's all oh, the, the bag is gone but anyhow so I finally I gave up and I said well where's the where's the spry mints she said they're they're in the bathroom by the uh, Epsom salts I thought what well here this what I thought was a false hit she had actually put them right down in here and that's where the spry mints were I thought it was heading to this I didn't see that the that the mints were down there so I claimed it as a false hit. Now I did have, when I was under the sink, it also locked onto a uh, a finger or a, a jewelry cleaner under there. Why it did that, I don't know. That was obviously a false hit. But the one that I thought was a false hit here actually turned out to be the true one. If I'd followed it, I would have found I would have found it. But that's interesting because it was finding the mint and xylitol. It was finding the spry products in the house, and. Uh, so interesting. So there is a lot more to it than just the subconscious. Thanks for watching. Oh, look at the beautiful weather we're having today. Tomorrow is April 1st. And this is our April Fool's joke. Interstate is shut down. It's supposed to have 10 to 20 inches of snow coming down today. Gusts up to 50 miles an hour. So, time to kill. And to get caught up on my... Uh, update videos the latest if you've seen my my video on the uh, on the uh, pyramid unleashed you'll see the and even my kick-ass organite devices I was inspired one day to test these devices out and by I had smaller cones with the original test but when I tested these together like this that these pieces together created a very very powerful output basically what it's doing is it's producing almost like a, uh, a stuffed sausage where the anions are coming off of each of these because they have the their high carbon their car carbon base this is the calcium carbonate uh, limestone cement and the same as the pyramids of, of Giza but when you get the uh, the density the concentration of the carbon and the mass of the larger pieces that I found uh, so I'm making these larger about a foot by a foot in the corner of cardboard boxes but what is happening is the anions come off of here for the for the uh, uh, for the distributor field for the guidance systems the otters forces but instead of each individual one having their own distributor field going around them and guiding them the distributor field goes around all of them uh, has an elasticity and it creates almost like a skin around this entire energy but other energies are being caught up inside of here so it's actually making like a stuffed sausage and the uh, distributor field is the skin on the sausage and the content is the energies that are being caught up into it very very large output high velocity um, and with the larger ones a nice frequency a calmer uh, frequency this feels really good to stand over these but anyhow I tried these in different uh, arrangements different numbers of devices and I'm liking going with the larger pieces and fewer going to, uh, to four to where you have a split pyramid a Bernoulli, Bernoulli pyramid but this is an interesting development in the fact that 
to find out that you can actually have these I'm going to turn this off here just by changing the arrangement here I'm going to that'll shut it off because I'm in a a, uh, a metal truck and if you let these run the entire uh, inside of the truck turns into like a uh, like an orgone accumulator and the anions and the other energies get really thick in here and that can cause an overdose uh, really quick and so what I've been doing if I get too much of it I have my coils and I have described my smiley coils that produce anions out this side cations out the other side I put this in my hat so the cations go toward me or I can put it in my pocket or to use the larger coils like this but I have them so that the cations go toward me in case I overdose on uh, on the anion charges and in order to know how my anions are sitting I've got a battery here and if I get a pendulum positive reading if I get a excuse me if I get a uh, yeah a positive reading over the over the positive side a favorable reading over the positive side means my body wants cations to balance it out which means I've gone overboard the negative side here if I do a pendulum test over it and it's if I overdone, overdone it it'll give me a counterclockwise which to me is negative it says I don't want any more I don't want any more I've had too much so that kind of lets me know where where I'm at but anyhow I made arrangements of um, six and seven pieces around and it was just interesting to see how they would all work together so it just kind of put something in the back of my head which came into play a little bit later on because one of the next things that was developed was somebody on the internet was challenging about he was poo-pooing the whole idea of the uh, of the uh, uh, water witching or using divining rods and a friend of mine that I know and trust very much uh, does some uh, work for a forestry uh, operation and his job is exploring um, loss or trying to locate um, certain things that have been lost in the historical records that are still out there and he and a fellow who works with him started using these he thought they were hokey at first but they found out that by using the divining rods that he could uh, find things that they could not find before like buried culverts and uh, other artifacts that were actually underground so taking his word from it because I, I trust him a lot he uh, showed me how they were making theirs and basically what this is is a coat hanger and then I took a uh, another coat hanger wrapped it around a, a screwdriver a Phillips screwdriver uh, hit, uh, bit and bent it up like that and then put a little hook on the end here I could shorten this up this doesn't have to be that long but anyhow and then I took this end here to a grinder so that it was nice and smooth and this works out really nice for a and I've got them extra long because I'm I'm just a beginner with this it's kinda like beginning surfing you start out with a real long surfboard to figure out what in the world you're doing so I've got two of these but the thing that was interesting was I wanted to find out if these used the otters fields and I was very surprised to know that they did and what happens is off the rods and this being quite long and this is what about goodness probably about two feet long the ions that come off of here come off at a very high velocity and the distributor field comes off with it and if I gave it a cognitive command to hit something it would eventually that high velocity field would eventually turn around and hit something like if it was something in my truck like take for example that oh, it's, come on it's a little bright there there you can see that bottle of spry right there if I aim this at this if I aimed it above it even if I aimed it at it what happens with the velocity it's coming off of here it'll pass right through it go on quite a ways probably beyond where those trucks are and then circle around and come back and hit it that's uh, the speed that it comes off and this really fascinated me because then I thought well 
you know, this must be um, the same thing that the bugs use, but they don't have metal antennas. So I tried just using holding a pen in my hand like this, and I checked, and by holding the pen like this, the same thing would happen. But the longer the rod, the longer the pen, the higher the velocity is going out. So I can actually, if I want to hit something close by, I can actually hold the pen like this and I get a really nice distributor field coming off of this and it will, like if I'm aiming for that, for that bottle right there, I can actually hold this in this direction and it will actually make the curve and hit that bottle. If I hold this out like this, it will pass it'll go out the front of the truck and then it will turn around and then come back and hit that but anyhow this was really interesting to discover about the the rods and the other thing that was fascinating was if I hold a rod like this I thought well where is the collector field if I hold a rod like this the collector field is on the back of my hand it forms and then the anions fly out the end of the of the rod but then I noticed that if I hold the rod straight out like this, that the collector field actually forms at my back. Not on the back of my hand, but out the back of my back. And the anions go through my body and then out the rod. So this was really, really fascinating. Um, I was also testing it in the house to see about um, if I could use it for directly pointing at things. And it wasn't working that good. I was actually... One thing I did find that was fascinating was I was heading toward the table with it, two rods, and heading towards something at the table, and suddenly the, the rods crossed, and I thought, what's going on? And I realized I was standing underneath the, uh, the ceiling fan, which was on. And I thought, well, that's fascinating. It wasn't crossing out where the, the uh, rotors, the blades were, but right underneath the motor part where the electricity was. So I went and turned the uh, ceiling fan off real quick, and while the blades were still spinning, walked under it again, and they did not cross. Then I went back and turned the blades on, and they did cross. So there was a... Somehow, the electricity that was going into the motor, it was creating a column of energy going down into the earth and back up. And this was going into that column of energy, and that was what was causing it to cross which I found very, very fascinating. Uh, some, so there has to be more exploration on this. But anyhow, with this in mind, about how these rods work, and I still have, because we haven't had any springs, so I can't go out looking for buried treasure. Um, but it is pretty fascinating as far as how these things work. And uh, also for the fact that all this is is two coat hangers. <laughs> That's... Uh, I like things that are cheap like that, and especially if I can get them to work. But the other thing that, that it made me think of was if these distributor fields will run through wire like this, I thought, what if I made, since I'm so fond of cheap things, this is actually a replica of like the seven or eight um, pieces, uh, triangles that I had set on the floor. I thought, well, let's see what happens with this. And sure enough, my body being organic, being carbon-based, creates a signal that goes out into the wires, and the wires create the large uh, stuffed sausage effect. And the thing that it happens here, and I have to be careful because I can't have, can't put my hand this way with it because if it's, my hand is in the center, blocking the center it'll shut down so I have to keep my just my thumb over there so there's nothing blocking the center so it doesn't shut down but then I can give this thing cognitive commands and it will send out a field a large field you can see how wide it is and I can then follow the field with a pendulum and this has really been helpful also the velocity of this is a lot less than, than with a lot of other things, so the uh, the the uh, thing will turn fairly rapidly, and this was really fascinating because just before I was going to make this video, uh, I could not find my favorite pendulum, which was my my little uh, bobber pendulum. So I went and grabbed this pendulum here. See how nice and sophisticated this is. This is just a little 
small size oop, dental floss but it works great as a pendulum anyhow so I held this up in front of the the uh, crown the Bernoulli crown and I said pendulum find my bobber pendulum and the, I just tracked where the field went out and went back and the field was pointing right down here and this thing had fallen down there and I couldn't see it and sure enough it went right to it so I found my favorite pendulum so we can use that for the demonstration but I am really liking this it's a, a Bernoulli crown and uh, the interesting thing is that I wanted to test also to see what happens if I take um, instead of using my body to activate it what if we used a piece of cement like this and I took the the crown with a piece of duct tape on it and wired it or just taped it to it and sure enough the whole thing generated started kicking out anions it's like oh man that's almost like an anion fan so that was really fascinating and I, I uh, played around with that for quite a while bizarre looking thing isn't it looks like a <laughs> hillbilly antenna or something but just a piece of, of uh, duct tape over that taping it to the cone the cone makes a good stand and this thing generates anions a person can actually use this in an office space put it under your chair or have it somewhere where it's facing at you so that was really fascinating and crazy looking you can call it modern art <laughs> But the thing I really am liking about this is the fact that it puts out such a large uh, circular um, signal that it's easier to follow using a pendulum because a smaller uh, signal, one that comes off of a point, is easy to get easy to lose it when you're doing your tracking. So I've been very very pleased with this. The only drawback with this is, like I said, the the uh, collector field is the same it's either behind your hand or behind your back and the drawback for that is if this is targeting something um, and it gets a, a, a false hit um, then usually what's best to do is take the item that's a false hit and put it into the collector field so that this thing will not will not see it but the collector field on this is so small that you don't have don't really have that option and so other things will have to be done to uh, to correct that but anyhow this is this has been my favorite uh, piece uh, the Bernoulli crown uh, for tracking and I also oh I, I was also saying that that you can hook it to this to a piece of cement like that it will generate and then I thought well what if you just set it on a cement floor set it on a cement floor it generates just beautifully uh, produces anions and distributor fields that were coming up and then I thought well this is interesting because I wanted to know about if there is an inversion if you make it too big so I made a large one that was actually of, of uh, Oh, it was about three times as big as this and set that on the floor and it, that uh, generated just beautifully on a cement floor so I actually tucked it under our stairway and it's generating there just fine and there's no um, no problem with the inversion for some reason which is really good to know but a lot of places like in Tokyo and other places there's a lot of uh, uh, there's a real lack of anions in the buildings and in the population so a person can actually take rings like this or rings of wire with a 90 degree turns on them and set them down on the cement floor and they will just generate uh, anions out of the cement it will cause the anions in the earth to radiate into the building which is a real simple thing to do I mean that is just a coat uh, what how I made this is I took the coat hanger and first I undid this wind here and then I zigzagged it back and forth and and brought it back around in a circle and then then twisted these parts back together there's no way in the world you could leave this twisted together and then <laughs> then do that you'd have to be Houdini to figure that one out but this thing is really nice and I use it an awful lot now because it has become my favorite uh, tool for tracking like I say except for the fact that you can't hide things in the in the uh, collector field 
I had something the other day that I it kept getting me a false hit so I had to take the eye I, objects that it was giving me the false hit on and put them in a box and hold them right here because these cones have got a large uh, collector field on them so that way this thing would ignore it because it was in the collector field but anyhow interesting things about this um, I already told you how it guided me to my <laughs> favorite pendulum um, the other day I was testing in the house and I'll probably post that video um, was going after some spry gum and it was finding all the mint and xylitol in the house which is fascinating and then I had a interesting thing happen I told it to go after the go after the extra gum and how I use this thing the pendulum will go nuts when it's in a in the field the the distributor field the tracking field if you get out of the field it will slow down and it'll stop so you can actually feel where it starts pumping where it starts moving where it gets into the field and then starts moving kind of like that but the thing that was interesting was I told it to go to the extra gum and as I held the the crown and it was going out and then the field stopped it's like wait, wait, wait where's the field and I checked and it was over to the right Oh, to the right. Where is this field going? Where is this going? And it went, it was going strong, went right into my kidneys. Thought, oh, that's not good. I said, let's try that again. Hit the, hit the extra gum. And sure enough, it went around and hit me in the kidneys. But oh, no. It doesn't even recognize the gum there. It's recognizing it all in my kidneys. And if that isn't a health alert, it's like, oh, dude, you got to stop chewing so much of that gum and start cleansing it out. So anyhow, that's the latest. So we've been doing tracking with this and, and learning a lot. And uh, <laughs> anyhow, thanks for watching. Okay, so I've been able to use this as tracking fields. And... The, the fields are ubiquitous. I mean, they come off of anything that's carbon-based. I mean, they'll come off of your nose. As a matter of fact, one day, my wife was sitting there at that chair, and she said, I'm going to think about something. And she said, follow the tracking fields and tell me where they go. So she thought about something, and I followed the tracking field off of her nose, and the tracking field went up in the air over to that chandelier right there. And I said, they're, they're going to the chandelier. What are you thinking about she said, I'm thinking about diamonds and jewelry. So, I don't know if you would call that a hit or a miss. She was thinking about diamonds and they were going right to, right to that chandelier. So, that was really fascinating. One day I was in the house and I was trying to figure out where my thermos was so I could put coffee in it, for my coffee enemas. And I couldn't find it anywhere. I looked in the truck, which was out in the, out in the driveway, and... I thought, well, hmm, let me try, see if I can track it down. So I took a Bernoulli crown, which is a coat hanger twisted up in a special way, and I, and I told it, um, thermos, find my thermos. And the, the field went right out to my truck. So I followed the field, and it went out to the truck, into the closet where the metal coat hangers were hanging that I had made the crown out of. So it got a genetic match to its composition, but it was not getting the thermos. So it was getting a genetic match. Another time, um, we were visiting some friends, and their dog, a, a black Sheltie, very, very old, it was blind, walked away from the house. So I thought, well, this is a good time to see what we can, what we can do with the tracking fields. So the first thing that I did was I used... I went to see if I could get some DNA from the dog. I went up to the dog's bed, but unfortunately they had just cleaned the dog's bed and vacuumed it. So I only got, I took a, 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 a handkerchief, not a handkerchief, um, napkin, tissue, and, and wiped the, uh, the bed trying to get some DNA. It only, had only a couple hairs on it. And I used my hand as, as the, uh, to get the distributor filled out. I put the, the dog's uh, thing over my over my hand, the the tissue over my hand, and 
it went across the street to a garbage can. I thought, oh no, didn't it get run over and somebody tossed it in the garbage? So I went across the street to the garbage can, looked down in there, and there was paper in there that matched the tissue. It's like, well, the tissue's not going to work. And so then I thought, well, I need a stronger, a stronger uh, signal to try to try to track this dog down. So I found a piece of cement. It wasn't like this. It was just a chunk of cement, but it had a corner on it. So I held the tissue over the chunk of cement. Now remember that this is going to be going for a genetic match, a cation charge, or my cognitive command. I'm giving it a cognitive command to find this dog, this four-legged animal. Well, the chunk of cement was giving it the genetic match for cement. I got a solid hit and I tracked it down and it was going over to the neighbor's yard and there was two cement deer. So I'm thinking four-legged animal. The cement is giving it the signal for cement and it put it together and gave me <laughs> a cement four-legged animal. It's like, no, we're not getting anywhere like this. This isn't working. So then I, I took my pen like this and I used this for for the uh, to give the field because my hand will, will put it out and then I thought well we're not going to get any problem with the plastic so I, I put the tissue over the plastic got a solid hit it was at the it was at the far end of the of the next block over behind this guy's house I thought well we got it we got it we got it so I'm parked out in front of this guy's house and I'm trying to figure out well what do I do now because it's a kind of a tight neighborhood um, the houses are close together it's like well I can't go and, and how this works is, and I can't do this with two hands, one hand holding the camera, but I, I can hold the, the pendulum out and the pendulum will detect the tracking field in the air. So I thought, well, what am I going to do now? You know, I've got something behind this guy's house as a genetic match. I think we've got the dog. And, but I can't go walking up to this guy's house swinging a pendulum to double check everything. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do here, feeling a little bit discouraged because I didn't want to look like an idiot and scare the neighborhood. Now the cops called over, hey, some idiot's over here swinging pendulums. So <laughs> I'm sitting in my car out in front of this guy's house and somebody walks up to the, to the, the fence and here from behind the fence where I couldn't see it comes a, a, it was like a golden lab, a small golden lab. So we had the dog connection, but it had one of those veterinarian cones over its head. And so we had the plastic connection. So here the tracking field had matched up the, the genetics of a dog and the plastics. And it gave me a solid hit. So that was kind of funny, kind of fascinating. And, but the point that I'm making is even a false hit is hitting something that it's trying to get a genetic match caddy on charge or a cognitive command or some combination the best combination that it can find in the proximity now i was also in here and i thought well you know let's see if this thing will track uh angelic forces so i, I told it to find me an angel find me an angel and i got a solid hit and the field came up and it went right over here and it went right to there. It's like, no, <laughs> wrong kind of angel. So the fact of the matter is it hits something. Okay, now let me take you to this. Now, you may have seen this on the internet. There was a guy who, kind of a shady character, shifty eyes. He posted a video about a, a photograph that somebody had given him. And it was taken down because I don't think he was supposed to have shown it. And for that reason, I'm glad I'm not showing it because I don't think the person wants it to be seen. But what they had was they had a resin pyramid with LED lights under it. At least I think there was LED lights under it. And in the photograph, there was uh, the, the um, photons of light were going up in the beam. The beam was illuminated, which it's supposed to do because the uh, distributor field actually carries what's here. We'll carry it up in the field. It disappeared off the photograph, and then it came back down here, and there was an orb. Which I thought, well, this is just fascinating. I kind of tucked that in the back of my head. And I don't know if you saw the, if you saw the video or not. I mean, it, it's been taken down from what I know. So I thought about that, and, you know, and kind of tucked it away. And then one day I was thinking about this again, and I thought, wait a minute. That tracking field is going up 
and coming down here and if you remember the story that I shared about when the tracking field went after my wife and she came back in it took 10 minutes for that tracking field to retract itself well the fact that the tracking field is going up here means that that orb was up here somewhere way up there and that orb moved and that tracking field had followed it down so the thing that was interesting was the knowledge that that beam hit that orb and that orb came down almost like that orb was trying to figure out what that signal was coming from but the thing that got me fascinated was okay wait a minute this tracking field can track orbs and i never realized i thought well let's try this and here's something that's funny because from what i saw from john and carol orbs i i really believe that they are what's described as a halo and i you know kind of think that i'm kind of a you know i try to follow christ so i thought well you know maybe i've got a halo you know i said find me an orb find me an orb and this thing took off right out the ceiling it's like what nothing behind me nothing even close to it. it's like yeah my halo is like a mile away <laughs> shows you what kind of saint i am but it took off and it's it's like okay i've got something i mean it always finds something it latches onto something so I'm standing there. It's like, well, okay, we got something, but how do we reel it in? What do we do now? And I did not know at all if the the tracking field, if it will actually um, retrieve something. But what else am I supposed to do? You know, it's it's latched on to to something. And so I said, well, please just bring it bring it here. You know, please, please bring it down here. And I, and I waited and nothing, you know, what I'm doing is I'm checking the air to see if I can find this tracking field and I can't find it. I can't find it. I can't find it. And so I, the next thing I said was, was, would you please set it in my hand? So I held out my hand and I said, would you please set this in my hand? And lo and behold, I was able to pick up the tracking field. It was coming down and then it stopped. Like imagine if my hand was here, it stopped a foot away from my hand. There was something in here. And I thought, goodness, this thing has found an orb. But then it was like, okay, I've got an orb in my hand. <laughs> now what do I do? I can't see it, I can't feel it. The tracking fields point that it's there. So this was really fascinating. And that that's all I did the first day and you know, because I didn't know what else to do. And then I thought about it, and I thought, well, you know, the next day I, I thought, well, let's see if we can get this thing to come back, because I know I can track it with the tracking field. And so I want to to get an orb to come. And <laughs> you would think for something like this, somebody might say, oh, you got to go through some ceremony, or you got to say some special magic, or you got to you know, sprinkle salt over your left shoulder or sacrifice a chicken or something like that. I found out if I want to make an orb come, I say, all I do is say, orb, please come into my hand. And the first day I did that, I kept repeating it for about a minute. And next thing I know, the tracking field is on another orb. It was, it was going directly from the tracking field right up to my hand. I knew I had an orb there. And I thought, that is fascinating really fascinating but then the next thing i know this this orb starts to float away and this is tracking it so i can actually follow that field and it starts floating away so i asked it again please come into my hand again it comes right back to my hand so anyhow the first day i could not detect it uh i mean i couldn't see it i couldn't get a pendulum reading off it i couldn't get anything all i could do is follow the tracking fields which i'm i'm good at i've been doing that for over a year and so i've learned how to do that but then it was interesting because because it was about the second day or the third day that I that I did this and I could just ask it please come into my hands and it would come, and then I started getting an ion reading off of it. I was actually able to detect the field, and this was fascinating because the more time I spend with working with this this orb, the more it becomes something that I can detect. 